Hello everyone, today I want to show you how we can use uh, an online tool called GeoGebra to do the phaser analysis. So first of all, why we are doing, why we are using phaser analysis to solve the circuit? We can keep the circuit in time domain, not the phaser domain, and solve it in time domain. Our problem is that when you get a complicated circuit with so many storage elements like the motors the number of the differential equations the, the order of the differential equations might might be a very high number solving differential equations is not easy we are looking for easier ways to solve the circuit one way to solve the circuit easier is to you go to the phaser and a phaser domain in the phaser domain, your differential equation will be changed to the algebraic equation, where you just do some algebraic um, operations and you can solve the circuit. So what you do is you change, you transfer your circuit from time domain to the phaser domain, solve it in the phaser domain with easy algebra, and then once you found the answer, you go back to the time domain. Looks like you are doing more steps but it's much easier to do this, okay? We know that all the uh, uh, rules that we have, all the laws that we have with circuit are with, in time domain are also valid in phaser domain. As an example, we know that KVL is also valid in phaser domain. So if I write the KVL in this loop, then I can easily find this equation given here. I put these bars to and um, put emphasis on the fact that these va these variables v's are basically representing a vector. That vector is something like this. This vector not only has the magnitude but also has an angle. Okay, so this is very important. When we say that we are in phasor domain. Not only the, that variables have ma magnitude, but also they have angles associated with them. Okay. For example, let's say that I have this circuit and I already know these variables, these values. I know that my Vs is 20 volt. I measure this voltage by the multimeter, for example. I know that my VR is 10 volt, my VC is 10 volt, and I know that my VA is also 20 volt. Now let's make the KVL. 20, which is for VS, is equal to 10 plus 10 plus 20. Well, does this mean that the KVL doesn't hold here? No, I made a mistake. This is wrong. These variables, they have a magnitude and angle. I cannot just add them by the magnitude. As an example, if you have an object and you apply force to the right, to this object, and you apply the second force to the left of this object, what do you get? You will get zero. F1 plus F2 would be zero. Why? Because you are considering the angle of these two, not just the magnitude. If it was magnitude, you would say F1 plus F2 is not zero. The same thing with the voltages here. So the voltages that you have here, they have a magnitude and angle. So I will have Vs is equal to Vr plus Vc plus VA. That is true. But their magnitude is not equal. The magnitude of VS is not equal to the magnitude of the other components. Okay. If you add them in terms of the vector characteristics, yes, then, then that would be a correct uh, way of solving this. As an example, let me draw a phaser diagram for this. one. I would start with this assumption that the angle of my current here is zero. If the angle of my current is zero, we can clearly say that since since 
based on the ohm's law dr is r times ir you can clearly find out that the angle of dr is in the same direction as angle of ir because r is a constant is a real number and its angle is zero so by that you can just assume that your dr is your reference voltage by that i mean that its angle is zero okay by reference i mean i just arbitrarily consider that this voltage this vector is the vector that its angle is zero okay now i want to find out vc what is the angle of vc this voltage i know that vc in capacitor the voltage would be equal to 1 over j omega c i c what is the angle between the voltage and the and the current of the capacitor well it would be the angle of VC would be the angle of 1 over J omega C plus the angle of IC. So the angle of this term is negative 90 because it's the angle is 1 over J and 1 over J is negative J and angle of negative J is 90. That means the angle of voltage is negative 90 degrees plus the angle of IC. By the way, this is a series circuit. IC and IR are the same. Therefore, if I assume this angle is zero, that is the same as this angle. So the angle of IC is also zero. That means the angle of VC is negative 90 degrees. So if I want to plot VC, I should go down because its angle is negative 90 degrees. The second term is my VA, which is the summation of the voltage across a resistance and an inductor what would be the direction of the voltage across vrl the same thing that we found here these two are in the same direction so my vrl would be a vector in this direction its angle is zero i added i add that vrl to the end of my previous vector that's why i draw it here but its angle is the same as the angle of vr okay now what is the angle of vl what is this angle well vl is j omega l i l the angle of vl is angle of j omega l plus angle of i l what is the angle of J omega L? 90 degrees. What is the angle of I L? Well, I L is the same as I. This current is the same as I C, same as I. All of them are the same. Therefore, its angle is also zero. So the angle of V L is 90 degrees. How do I plot that? I should add 90 degrees to this. Therefore, my, my VL could be somewhere like this. So, VRL plus VL makes my VA. My VA is nothing but the summation of these two. So, my, what is my VA? My VA is actually this. Now, my question is, what is Vs? Well, Vs is nothing but the summation of these three vectors. First vector was this, Vr. Second vector is Vc. Third vector is Va. As I have here, Vr, Vc, Va. So, I go this way. And that's my Vs. I want to plot this. As, as you can see, first of all, just want to make sure. You understand that these vectors are now following the KVL rules. Their summation is equal to Vs. Not just the magnitude. So if somebody...
tells you is this correct meaning that just the magnitudes summation of the magnitudes would be zero would be equal to vs no you should always consider the angle okay so what i want to do is i want to use an online tool to draw this phaser diagram what i will do is uh, i can either use a compass and protect uh, protractor to do this or i can use basically a online tool i i I want to show you how you can use an online tool called GeoGebra. Okay, this online tool is taken from a paper that I had uh, with two other professors, Professor Sid Vias and Professor Ali Shaban, and we saw a B, uh, our paper was accepted in ASWE. Let's see how how we can basically uh, use uh, online GeoGebra to plot uh, this uh, this phaser diagram. Okay, so what I want to do is doing something like this. Let's go from the first part. You go to this website called GeoGebra, and then you click on Start Calculator, and then you go to here, which is Tools. So you select this one, Tools, and then you go here and you choose Vector. Okay, and uh, my vector was, so let me try to draw this one, okay. So I have all these variables and I want to draw them. Okay, my VS is, my VR is 10 volts. So I go from here to 10. Okay. That's my VR. Okay. I click on it. And then if you double click on this one, first of all, if you right click and click on settings, I can give it a name. I will give it VR. Okay. So this is VR. And also in over here you, you have other other basically uh, options and features that you can put it here. Okay. I can put change this to name and value. So now when I go back, it is showing me this value is 10 and comma zero. That means it's 10 in terms of the x-axis y-axis is zero now i want to do i want to i want to plot vc how much is vc 10 where does it go it goes down negative 90 degrees remember that right so i go negative uh 10 which is gonna come to this one okay again i have to right click settings and then V, C, and then name and value. And yes, that's it. Come back after this. What was the third things that I needed? So I have V, S. I have, I plotted V, R. I plotted V, C. Now V, A. My V, A magnitude is 20 volts. But I don't know exactly what is the angle of that if I don't know R, L. And I know Vs is also 20 volt. So look, looks like that. I knew that my circuit was something like this. I know the magnitude and the angle of these two vectors, which was Vr and Vc. I knew this too. About these two, I have limited information. I know their magnitude only, not the angle. So what can I do? I can just consider this point as the circle of, a, uh, of the center of a circle and make a circle around this point. OK? 
okay so that all these points representing the same magnitude which should be 20 volt and then I can consider this starting point which would be my uh, starting point of Vs and make another basically uh, circle so I will choose this and make another circle with this radius okay with the radius of 20 as well and I find where these two circles cross each other that point would be the point that is my result that point show me that my result is my result in terms of so as I was saying that uh, in this equation the KVL that we we draw we wrote here Vs is Vr plus Vc plus Va. I know the magnitude and the angle of this one. The angle, I assume it is zero, which is fine. That's my reference voltage here. This one, I know this angle with respect to the Vr, it's negative 90. About this one, I'm not sure because I don't know exactly how much is the value of R. And therefore, I don't know the angle of this but the trick that I do here to find the angle of these two is I make two circles. One circle with this radius and the magnitude of VA. And one circle with this point and the magnitude of VS. Well, when these two circles cross each other, I find that point to be my, uh, my basically uh, result. Okay, so what I do is I go back here. I know these two vectors. I have now 20 volts, but I don't know what is the angle. So what I do is I go here. I click on more circle with center with radius. So we don't need that one. We need circle with radius. So I go here circle center and radius. I choose this one. I click here and I know that the radius is 20. So GeoGebra will make a circle for me. I have to delete this one. Okay. Um, I can delete them. Delete this. So I made a circle with the center C. I have to make another circle with center A. So what I do is again I go to this point, which was circle with center. Here, center with radius, sorry. And I make another one with the radius of 20. Okay, as you can see, these two circles are crossing each other in two points two results I will get one of them is the one that is correct I know that the angle of R J R plus J Omega L is a positive value so from this point I should go up not down this is the answer this point is the answer so what I do is I just continue making my plot by going from here to this point what is the name of this plot this vector do right click settings this is VA and under name and value as you can see GeoGebra is showing this in terms of the X axis X and Y values okay I have to delete this one again and this one and now another vector would be from this point going to this point and that is my vs name and value this time instead of saying x and y maybe i want to get the angle i want to see this 
um, phasor um, value in terms of the uh, a polar form, not Cartesian form, not x plus jy, but r an angle of theta. So what I do is I go to advanced, uh, I go to algebra tab here, and instead of Cartesian coordinates, I choose polar coordinates. And now you can clearly see that this telling you the magnitude is 20, angle is 24.29. So if you need the angle, that's that's the way that you can do. Again, I'm not very comfortable with this. Okay, now sometimes you also want to get the angle. I told you what you can do. You just go to settings and change that. But there is also another thing, angle with uh, angle that you can find here. You need to select three points. For example, you want to find uh, the angle at point C. You select these three points, one, two, three, and then the GeoGebra shows you the angle. I hope this was useful.